Hey, hey, hey! This is Handy Andy, your uh, not so good maintenance man. What we're doing today is my neighbour has uh, got his Tesla Model 3 parked out in the weather because the little cables that run down the side of the uh, garage door, the ones on his garage door are exactly the same as mine except his are all busted. So there's a little roller up the top there and there's a cable that goes down to the uh, to the bottom there somewhere. You can see it way better when the door's open, but we'll get a gist of that later. And as that cable spills off that drum up there, it puts a tension on this spring, which sort of counters the weight of the door so that the lifting mechanism doesn't have to uh, do so much work. So uh, here's a buggered, and being the cool, sort of a maintenance manny type uh, neighbor that I am, I, uh, Thought I'd have a crack at building some new ones. So uh, the uh, the cable that pretty much disintegrated was similar to this one. This is the other one, and you can see the by the way it's put together. That uh, is is uh, whoever put it together. It was a steel line garage door, so they've used a uh, a proper swaging tool on that. See, I don't have one of those, so uh, I just went down to Bunnings and got some. Uh, cable that uh, is a is a pretty close match yeah it looks it looks pretty close to me I made that loop just a little bit bigger than the other one but it, it won't matter it won't affect its performance so to swage it I've used good old uh, vice grips and I'm not sure if you can see in there or not the one at one side of the grip on the inside like right in the jaw there is flat uh, hang on the point with my finger so uh, one of those is flat and one of them's got a decent sort of ridge on it uh, like a blade on it now I'm not sure if that's for cutting stuff or or actually crimping stuff but it does work good at crimping stuff so I've gone two on each side and uh, I haven't tested it but it looks pretty good to me well, we'll give it a test in a minute so yeah, just as a as a bit of a look how I'm doing this. Um, yeah, in this end, I've got the uh, better of the two old cables looped over the tray of the cruiser, and then uh, I pull them out so that you know they're both the same length. I use me uh, the old master key set there to. Uh, to cut the cable, um, as you can see there, the uh, the length isn't exactly right, but it's more critical that the swage ends up at the right position. So, what we do there is we stick our little little swage on there, make sure he's the right length. So yeah, as that squishes down, uh, damn, the light is terrible. Uh, it uh, deforms that swage, and uh, one side uh, is, is a flat sort of damager, and the other one's a bit of a pointy damager. So yeah, we'll do that a couple of times on each side, and uh, fairly confident that that won't slip off. Um, not sure what these swages are made. Uh, what these, yeah, swages are made out of. Um, one of them, I sort of glanced off the edge of it with the with the tool, and uh, it looked like it might have been um, chrome or tin, probably tin coated copper. So uh, probably not much good in a marine application, but obviously this is uh, gal coated. Um, this gal coated uh, steel wire is, um, or steel rope, depends on how you like to call it, is um, is not particularly fond of salt water, although they do use it for uh, 
brake uh, cables on uh, overrider brakes on boat trailers. It doesn't last very long, but not a lot of stuff on those trailers does last very long. I replaced mine with uh, stainless steel balustrading wire, and that works quite well. Um, and I've used, I didn't use swages, I used little little clamps. I should, uh, should have had one out to show you, but yeah, you'll see them in, in Bunnings, it's stainless steel 316 hose, uh, cable clamps. And uh, it's, it's a bugger because they're, they're, they're a little bit too tiny to get any real torque on them. And uh, the next size up that you know has got a decent nut on it, it's um, too big for uh, like 3 mil, 3.2 mil wire rope. It's more like suited to 5 mil. And 5 mil is getting towards the heavier side of things for, um, for uh, overrider brake cable. Is, uh, you kind of want the overrider brake cable to to stretch before it bends anything. So uh, as the trailer flexes and stuff under your braking load, your overrider will be pushed home, and you'll have it set up so it's got the right tension on your uh, mechanical overriders. But if you know if you fuck it up, the uh, the flexing of the trailer will change the travel of the uh, cable, and, and it'll, it'll bend and break stuff. So uh, the um, the five mil cable is a little bit scary for me, but it's probably fine. But uh, just rambling on crap, really. But you know, take it for what it's worth. So radio, we got the cables in in their spots. We're uh, giving it a bit of uh, backlight, a bit of this action, and uh, the cables are sitting in their drums quite well. And uh, we've just had to run it up and down a couple of times, get the lube to. Uh, so go its thing. Getting these the same tension was a challenge, but uh, like there seems to be a little bit of a difference there again. But we're just going to leave it for a little bit, see how it plays out. So instead of waiting until the 14th for the Steel Line Garage Door Shop to open up so we can put this precious thing away, we've fixed it ourselves.